<laughs> Healthy.io are growing in the health industry. They are video chat doctor services that connect you with doctors who can provide diagnosis and prescriptions. Mm -hmm. Well, if your doctor's in Jamaica, you have to get them on the phone. And there's right? that. I mean, what a, what, a, what a country, or whatever country. You can just sit back and Skype into your patients from, you know, Bermuda. That, what? That's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. Well, these companies are now expanding to provide lab testing and could send you to the closest lab that they work with. Hmm. So then the question is, would you go to a virtual doctor? I mean, I have already. For certain things, I think yeah. I would. How about you? Would you? Yes, Absolutely. You go? Yeah. To a virtual doctor? Sure, because I don't really like going to the doctor as is. I mean, hmm. wife has to get after me to get, you know, the, the physical, the, the mm -hmm. checkup or whatever. Yeah. Turned out I hadn't been in like five years. Mm. Um, but yeah, this would, you know, seeing a doctor in person or seeing a doctor via like an iPad or something, isn't that going to be health insurance dependent, depending on what happens with all of this? If, yeah, current events and news. I think they save money that way. So I don't know if you could do your physical virtually, but no. like let's say, you know, your allergies have been bugging you. Right. You think you have a sinus infection. You know, you can log on, explain your um, symptoms to your doctor. If you have like a little rash, you can show it to them and they make diagnosis that Well, way. it's our, you know, Apple's been working on this stuff <clears throat> for a long time. They're working on your watch will be connected to your iPhone. Right. It'll check your pulse, your vitals. They've got a little device. They say they're close to rolling out where you'll get a drop of blood and put it on what looks like one of those little square ups. Mm -hmm. you know, like diabetics doing card. their yeah. testing. You put it on there. It's connected to your iPhone, sends it right in, and you hmm. can be talking to somebody while they're interacting. I think it is the future. Crazy. Right? Well, yeah. it's all a moot point if 11 or 14 million people lose their coverage. So. Mm. We'll then there's that. that. Plays out. Then there's that. We mentioned earlier it's World Password Day. You know Chuck's already. Yeah. Chuck G123 e. at AOL.com. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're supposed to change your password all the time on certain yeah, things. So that's the so advice that bothersome. we get. But now some are saying that it's not worth it. What do you Why? think? What do you mean? Well, so this is the, this, the head of National Cybercrime Unit in the UK said that you shouldn't have to change your password all the time. Hmm. However, a better approach, according to Paul Edmonds, said that the ideal um, frequency change passwords give you protection, feeling like that they give you protection by changing them frequently is a fallacy. So what he says is, create one strong password, Okay. remember that, and use that. Mm-hmm. I've been employing you, that you, a little bit. By that? Uh, well, I hate that because it, it happens here in the building too. You get the message. What is it? Every month or so? Mm -hmm. Every month and a half, yeah. two months? You have to change your password. And it's like, oh, and then you wind up having to either put it in the phone or mark it down. So I'm not sure that that's secure anymore because that's they true. won't let you use the one that you really used to like two passwords ago. Right. <laughs> you know, it's right. Like, right. Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. So changes they make are you know simple enough for hackers to figure out, and mm -hmm. if you change it enough, eventually you begin using easier passwords. So that you can remember them, which makes you, which makes perfect right. sense, and then that leaves you vulnerable. Right. Then you're I, like, I need a formula. My password's like 18 or 19 characters long. I was trying to do it in my head. Really? Yeah. Serious? Yeah, and it's got all I'm kinds of special. I mean, Chucky123 is in there too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, part so it's part of it. It's in the middle. <laughs> Chucky123. Exclamation at yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hashtag. Yeah. All right, let's check out what's happening around the D this weekend. Eastern Market we go. That's where all things Detroit is happening this weekend. Yes, it's a special event that brings together small businesses and connects them with consumers. Now, this is great because the last time they had this, it rained horribly and I wasn't able to attend. But the idea is to increase brand awareness of Michigan businesses and support them. The event is Sunday, the sunny day of the weekend, in sheds two, three, four, and five, and tickets start at just five dollars. Over at our partner, the Dirty Dog Jazz Cafe in Gross Point, enchanting Kimmy Horn is performing. This is really cool stuff. This jazz vocalist transforms non-traditional songs into swinging sensations. Uh, she has two shows tonight through Saturday. For more info, visit the website dirtydogjazz.com. And? And we have a great giveaway today, a $150 gift card to Dirty Dog Jazz Cafe. You and your friends can enjoy an evening of exceptional food and entertainment. For your chance to win, go to our Live in the D Facebook page, contest rules, or click on Detroit.com. We will announce the winner tomorrow on the show. If you're ready to try a one-of-a-kind experience in the D, plan on heading out to the first home game for Detroit City Football Club. The soccer squad has some of the greatest fans who truly turn this into a participatory party. 
The home opener is at the renovated Kiewer Stadium in Hamtramck. It all gets started Saturday, 730. DCFC has started the season 2-0, so head out and cheer them on to another victory. They can remain undefeated. It looks like a big party, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so starting today and running through Sunday, you can check out the International Women's Show in Michigan. It's wow. happening at the Suburban Collection Showplace. It covers everything, fashion, fun, food, shopping, beauty, health, and more. There's also a Teacher's Day, Girls' Night Out, and Mother-Daughter's Day. Where are all the men's? It's, what? it's the ladies. We're all whittling. Yeah, We're all <laughs> you're whittling, yes. Admission We're is $10 busy. at the door. That looks like fun. It's a huge deal. I mean, they pack the lot. The whole weekend will be crazy. Still ahead on Live in the D, grab your fascinator, uh, and you can also grab your bourbon. We're Where's the gonna... bourbon? There's bourbon over there. I see it somewhere. It's called the butcher's <laughs> cut. I'm not sure what kind of bourbon that is, but it looks interesting. Uh, we're going to get you prepared for what some say is the best two minutes of the year. That's coming up. And there's something about this model that doesn't quite match. Can you tell the difference? It involves one of the most popular fashion statements. See the before and after look. Plus, we'll show you how you can join the trend. Still ahead. Up next, a guy whittles, and it's compelling television. It's that time of year to get outside and enjoy an experience. It's something, I don't know, we call it one of a kind. And we want to say hello to our Live in the D fan of the day, Nancy Breyer from Troy. Breyer? Breyer? Breyer. Breyer. Let's go with Breyer. She says her family is her life, and oh, by the way, go Tigers. Not today. Nice. You already <laughs> And for being our fan of the day, Nancy has won a Kroger gift card. If you want to be our Live in the D fan of the day, you know what to do. Just follow the link on our Live in the D Facebook page for contest rules. Go to clickondetroit.com. Find them under the Scene on 4 tab. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on Live in the D. It's Cinco de Mayo, and we will show you where to celebrate this weekend with authentic flavors of Mexico. That's coming up tomorrow, live in the D. We're starting at 10 a.m. as always. Jason. We're going to have food like that? I hope. I hope so, too. The Art Fair Circuit in Michigan kicks off this weekend with the Palmer Park Art Fair in Detroit. It's an opportunity to find a one-of-a-kind piece for your home. Joining us live is Mark Loeb, the director of Palmer Park Art Fair. Thank you for being with us. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Uh, let's start here on the end with the wearable art. Sure, so the, uh, more and more people are finding that they have limited space in their home, but they still mm -hmm. want art, so they're buying things like this uh, beautiful shawl by Judy Sledge, or some of this jewelry. What is that are, made of, that shawl? Uh, this is a wool shawl. Okay. And it's something that you can wear um, as a casual thing, or you can dress it up a little bit uh, also. Well, you can start with the shawl and then go to the bling here. Right, right, right. So about a third of the artists there at the show will have wearable things such as fibers or jewelry. Uh, the other two thirds have more conventional art such as the paintings, sculpture, okay. a lot of functional work too. Now we're looking at a painting here. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this is more of an abstract by uh, Kevin Pikinski. And we have everything from abstracts through very realistic, um, something for just about every home. Okay, and right next to it? Yeah, yeah that's a dip and uh, chip platter. And then if you keep going, you'll see that there's some other items that are made out of glass. We have a beautiful paperweight and a uh, flower, and then another ceramic piece passed there. So there's functional, there's decorative. Uh, we have over 70 artists, and they're from 16 or 18 states, all juried, so we know they're high quality. We're going to hear like a, a cap, like a beanie? Yup. Keep your head warm if it's a little chilly this weekend. And then uh, this right here. Yeah, it's a, kind of a scarf. I'm not that great with the uh, technical terms because it, this one actually goes over your head. Oh, very fashionable. And uh, that'll stay on a little bit better if you're not used to scarves. We have some video of a log cabin that we're going to show the fine folks at home. Sure. Why would we be showing this log cabin? Where is that? Well, the city has invested in rehabbing the log cabin. This is where Senator Palmer used to live. That was his summer home. When, you know how people in Michigan go way up north in the we summer. We go up north or out to the lake or whatever. Right, so Eight Mile Road was way up north back then, and that's where he would go in the summer, so it would be a little bit uh, chillier. He wouldn't have to be in the heat of the uh, city. Okay. And uh, the city's been renovating it, and we've also been renovating the um, windows. Uh, the people for Palmer Park have been working on that. 
And the poster we have this year shows the cabin as well as the uh, uh, look of the windows. Um, okay. if you see that, um, the Very, windows. Oh yeah, windows. so the windows are right. incorporated into the design. Very yeah, cool. So that's kind of cool. That's a limited edition poster and available at the show. Okay, excellent. We have Tony working on a project over here. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, you're uh, riding the pony, this bench that you built just for the art of whittling. Yes. What are you uh, creating here for us? This is uh, this carving is called fan carving. Okay. Uh, what makes it unique? Oh is my gosh! I was looking at what you were doing here. I didn't. Yeah, even yeah. Know well, yeah. That's a here. that's a final there, uh, and that's actually made from one piece of wood. You're kidding? No. Uh, is that a hummingbird? Yes, it is. Oh, right here, right here, Kevin. There you go. That is a hummingbird. How delicate or fragile is that? Oh, uh, they're fairly delicate, but they they can take a tumble. They're very light. How long does it take you to make something like that? Uh, about an hour, hour and a half. Really? And when did you discover that you had such um, talent in minutia? Well, I've never carved before. I was into woodworking and I saw this art on a woodworking show and it really took my interest. So I tried it and I've been hooked ever since. Wow. Well, are you going to be at the show? Yes. Yeah? Do like a demonstration? I'll, I'll be on my pony carving away. Just like you are right now? Yes. And now you're going to continue carving throughout the show for us? Right? Yes. And do we know what it's going to be a surprise at the end? Um, not too much of a surprise. It, it will be a bird, but it might be a different kind of bird. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Good right. to see you. Thank you. Uh, Mark, one last chance. Tell everybody at home all about the show. Sure. Well, we're Saturday and Sunday. Saturday is 10 to 7, Sunday 11 to 5. Okay. And the weather looks a little bit cloudier on Saturday. So, you know, that might be another day to go to some of these other events that you've been talking about. But everybody's got to be out there Sunday to support these artists. Sunday. Yeah, that's what makes a difference. You know, us buying art in the city is what helps bring things back to the city. Okay, sir. Thank you for coming in and bringing in all these uh, fine examples. Great. Thank you, and hope to see you out there. Tati, let's go over to you.